lastly, we know that company culture is very important, both to the employers and job seekers. In your opinion, how can companies create a purpose-driven uh, purpose culture and why value alignment between a job seeker and a potential uh, employer is important to have? Okay, so I'm, I think very differently about this than most people that I speak to about this. And some people think I'm, I'm crazy. So, you know, just you asked me for my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel like the culture I built at LinkedIn is one of the best in the world. So I'm very, very proud of that. But I didn't just build it by myself. And the way we were able to achieve what I think is one of the most compelling cultures that I've ever seen is that we didn't tell people what the culture is. When we're hiring people, we say, what kind of culture do you want? Mm -hmm. And can you come make us better? Mm -hmm. um, and that was very different. Most places I worked, honestly, they would say, here's the culture, Steve, go tell all the employees, study the culture. And when we came, the founder, uh, Reed Hoffman, in my first interview with him, he said, because I asked him the question, I said, Reed, I worked in all these industries. I've lived in six countries. What kind of culture do you want? I can do it. And he looked so disappointed. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get fired on day one. <laughs> he said, Steve, let me ask you a question. What kind of culture do you want? I said, I want a culture where people can do their best work. They're inspired. They make a difference. They feel valued. And they have a life. And he said, me too. And he walked out. And I said, nobody ever asked me what kind of culture I want. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the trap mm -hmm. for a lot of leaders is they feel they have to tell people what it is. And I think the more powerful thing is invite them to help you build something that works for everyone. And there's no right answer there. Yeah. What high performance means to me and you, like you might like dark, quiet rooms. I might like bright, loud. I might like yeah. big teams. You like small, like it could be different and it should be different because we're different. Yeah. And so that's why when people come to Silicon Valley, oh, we're going to go look at the culture at Google and Facebook and Twitter and Apple. Well, that's fine, but you're not those companies. Yeah. So what you can learn from them is they valued culture. So the best way, and I'm helping several unicorns in Latin America right now uh, and some countries actually that are thinking about how do we help leaders think differently about culture. And I feel really strongly about this. And when I share that to people, they go, oh yeah, that makes sense. But most people, we can't ask the employees what the, we, that's why we're paid as managers. We should know the answer. No, you shouldn't know the answer because, and by the way, whatever the answer is, will be different next year. I think that there's this debate between cultural ad and cultural fit. And I agree with you, it should be cultural ad because you want to bring different people as we talk about different mindset, curiosity to help the organization grow and get better. And we don't want to hire mini me's. We want people different. But right. do you think that if they bring a lot of different personalities, then there will be some clashes or not clarity? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, any good business any successful company has to have clash. Mm -hmm. This is where, I, you know, I was talking to someone on his podcast, you know, happy at work. I go, why do you call it happy at work? I said, because happy is nice. But if you emphasize happy, that means someone might not want to say something because it's going to make you uncomfortable. Mm. They, they're not going to tell you a hard truth. Yes. Happy is a nice destination, but I think success comes out of, you know, they call it forming and storming. Yes. Before you norming, you know, yes. and performing. Yeah. So, you know, difference is a beautiful thing. And this is why, you know, we take, a, and I posted a very provocative piece on LinkedIn earlier this week about diversity. Yes. Are we making any progress with that right now? Like, are we solving the right problem there? Um, and it's not about happiness, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's about having some hard conversations. Mm -hmm. So I was working with a, a friend of mine recently and he said, I was just told by management. He's a white man like me. He said, I'm just told about management. I have to hire 30 people who are of diverse background. Yeah. Just to have a checkbox. We hired different diverse checkbox. That's right. They didn't tell me why. And they didn't have a conversation with me to ask me, how does that make you feel? And he says, I feel like I'm not wanted here now. Mm. And so what he's going to do, I think, he's going to not do that. He's going to say, okay, I got the order. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And they call that passive resistance. And that is poison. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, we recognize that this may feel like someone's getting an advantage and you're getting a disadvantage, but we believe you're going to get advantage. If we have more diverse people here, you're going to make more money. Your job's going to be more interesting. You're going to have a greater career. If we bring these people in, that's why we're doing it, but they don't have that conversation because yeah. they're afraid. 
Yeah, I feel that DEI, it's becoming just a conversation. Okay, we need to hire LGBT, Black minorities, just, just to have a checkbox or from the government. Yes, we have people, but nothing happening in reality and nothing has been changed. Right, that's right. And if you're just hiring the numbers and not asking them, do you feel safe here? You know, mm. you're, you're, you know, you're a, you know, dark skin lesbian. Do you feel safe here? Do you feel respected? Or safe environment questions. Well, they will just stress. leave. Yes. They're gonna, you're gonna, maybe you hire them and then they go, I'm not welcome here. I don't know why they hired me. Yeah. I, yeah. I totally agree with you. And again, thank you for those great tips, Steve. Again, if the audience have any other tips, leave them below. We'd like to hear from you. So tune in next time for another great question with Steve.